Hello everyone, it's lovely to be with you again. My name is Margaret and I'm part of the Children and Families team at St John's Church here in Sandyway. Before we begin our assembly today, I hope you don't mind, but I just need to check on some shopping. Christmas crackers. Christmas cards to send to people who don't live here in the village. Wrapping paper with Christmas puddings, Santa and snowflakes. Christmas jumper. What else might I need to prepare? Ah yes. I may need these. Or even one of these. I'm sure that you're busy preparing at school for different activities in the lead up to Christmas. And for Christians, this is a very special time. It's called Advent. Advent's a strange word. It comes from the Latin and it means coming. But who's coming and where to? And it sounds a little bit like the word adventure. And for Christians, Advent can be an adventure that takes them towards the celebration of Christmas Day. Sometimes you have things like these. Advent calendars. So you can open a door each day and find something out. In this one, there are sweets to share with the family. In this one, there are things to make each day which will make a scene at the end. And you may have an advent candle which has numbers on it from 1 to 24 from the 1st of December to Christmas Eve, which a grown-up could light each day. This one has the three kings who went on an adventure, but more of that in a little while. So why do Christians celebrate in Advent and what do they do? Well, Advent's a time to think perhaps about things you can do better. It's a time perhaps to think of other people, to say prayers more, and to prepare, to get ready, to get ready for the coming, the coming of Christmas Day, when Christians remember that Jesus was born. Now, Jesus and his family lived over 2,000 years ago in a country which we now call Israel. And at the time, the Romans were in charge of that country, just as they were in lots of different places, including eventually in England. Now, the Romans were very keen on knowing who lived in different parts of the empire that they ruled. And so they had to make sure that they got a number of people and how much they could pay in taxes. When the Romans wanted to count people, they couldn't send them an email and say, fill this form in, send it back so we know who lives in your house, because that didn't exist. They couldn't pick up a telephone or put an announcement on television because they didn't exist either. So they would go to the towns or cities and they might have someone who stood in a marketplace and told everyone what was going to happen or what the emperor wanted them to do. Now all that happened a long time ago And Joseph and Mary lived in the north of the country of Israel. 
a place called Nazareth. Mary was expecting a baby. So you can imagine she and Joseph were preparing quite a bit. They probably had to find clothes and warm blankets, get in extra food, make sure that they had some help for when the baby arrived. And Joseph was a carpenter. So perhaps he was working on making a cot. Now all those preparations were going on, ready for the coming of their baby, the special baby that Christians believe was God's son. Unfortunately, things were interrupted because of the Roman Emperor. The story of what happened is in the Christian Bible, the Holy Book, and it's in the New Testament, which tells us about the things that Jesus did when he was alive, the story of his birth, and things that happened after he died. So this is the story of Mary and Joseph 2,000 years ago. Joseph was the carpenter in Nazareth. He was proud that he belonged to a family that came from Judah and was actually descended from King David himself. He was very interested in his family tree and knowing who his ancestors were. Mary and Joseph were expecting their first child. Mary had been told by an angel that this child was going to be God's special son. So the preparations they were making were even more important. Joseph started making things in the house, making sure everything was tidy. And then the great Augustus, Emperor of Rome, wanted to know how many subjects he had and how much tax he could collect from them. He ordered a census or counting of everyone in his empire. Every Jewish man had to report to the town where his father came from and make sure that his name was put on the electoral roll. News of the census reached Nazareth not long before Mary's baby would be born. Joseph would have to make the long journey south to Bethlehem to put his name on the Roman register and he wanted to take Mary with her with him rather than leave her alone in Nazareth. Now the journey they had to go on today probably wouldn't take very long but there were no cars, there were no trains, there were no buses so the only thing they could do was walk and take a donkey with them Sometimes Mary was able to ride the donkey and sometimes it carried their belongings. The journey took nearly a week. In the daytime they walked, at night they slept in the open. How glad they were when they came to Bethlehem and saw the town on, its, on the hilltop surrounded by peaceful fields. The inn would provide shelter. It may not be a great place, but they hoped they'd find room. When they arrived, every place was full. There was no possible space for them to even lie down in any of the hotels or inns. Someone noticed their tired and disappointed faces and realised that Mary's baby would soon be born. 
The kind innkeeper offered them a stable, a shelter where animals slept. It wasn't great, but it was better than being outside. Joseph cleared a space and cleaned it as best he could before Mary was able to lie down. Someone brought her some water to drink and so she could wash her hands and face. And that night, in that very simple place, Mary's baby, Jesus, was born. Now, Joseph could have gone to Bethlehem on his own, but he didn't want to leave Mary behind. And I guess Mary didn't want to be left behind either because she took on a very long journey. And for Christians, Advent is a journey. It's looking forward to Christmas Day. It's thinking about others, praying more, trying to do things better. You'll find out through Advent, through the preparations for Christmas, who else were preparing for journeys as part of the Christian story. I'm going to say a prayer. And if you'd like to make it your pray, prayer, say Amen at the end. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time of Advent, a time to prepare to celebrate Christmas Day, a time to think of others, to try and do things better, and to share when we can. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that your Advent adventures at school and at home are great fun. Have a lovely Christmas celebration. Mm -hmm.